chance to wake up this morning. We thank you for those who gave and for those who didn't give. And for those who didn't give, Lord God, and Lord, please let this be a blessing to you and let it bless and let it be blessed back to them tenfold exceedingly and abundantly, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you all who don't know, that song is a special song you spoke some of you know I've been traveling this past week. And those of you who don't know I've been traveling this past week, I've been traveling this past week. Oh, Lord have mercy. I think we had some 2,300 miles lost last week. Amen. So uh, I really don't want to preach this morning. I really just want to testify. We'll see how that goes. Our text this morning is found in Luke, the, 20, the ninth chapter, verse 23. Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 23. chapter verse 23 would you please stand Luke 9 23 if you found it say amen, amen. if you're still looking say hold on amen praise Jesus Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up her cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me, my sake, will save it. For what? Profit is it to a man or woman if they gain the whole world and is destroyed themselves or lost. For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes into his own glory and his fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Amen. You may be seated. Our focus text is verse 23. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up her cross daily, and follow me. I like to use this as a subject topic today. I surrender all. I Surrender all. Last week we had this discussion about all of me. We talked about giving all of ourselves to our God. Today we are following in the footsteps of Jesus as Jesus begins to communicate with his disciples. He says to them, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up a cross daily and follow me. You all notice how I'm putting him and her in there, amen? amen. I don't want folks to be confused. <laughs> Following Peter's historic confession, the Lord commanded them not to tell others. Nothing must interrupt his pathway to the cross. Jesus has a job to do. 
Then the Savior unveils his own immediate future to them. He must suffer, must be rejected by the religious leaders of Israel, must be killed, and must be raised on the third day. This was an astounding announcement. You can imagine what kind of announcement it was that Jesus, their Savior, is making to them at this time. Let us not forget that these words were spoken by the only sinless, righteous man who ever lived on earth. They were spoken by the true Messiah of Israel. They were the words of God manifest in flesh. They tell us that the life of fulfillment, the perfect life, the life of obedience to the will of God involves suffering, rejection, and death in one form or another. And resurrection to the life that is deathless. Having outlined his own future, our Lord invited the disciples to follow him. This would mean denying themselves and taking up their crosses. Please understand, God, Jesus did not force anybody to do anything. He invited them. He says, if you would like to follow me, and that same word goes to us today, if you would like to follow Jesus... Then you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow him. It's a, it is a journey. It's an amazing journey because God is an amazing God. Jesus is an amazing Messiah. The things that he has done for us is truly amazing. We tend to live below our God-given lifestyle because we lack commitment to following Christ regularly and completely. We tend to live in constant transition from one crisis to another. Never feeling stable, never feeling at home, never feeling at ease, but always in crisis and chaos and confusion. You will go through things in this life. But it does not mean that your life has to be chaotic and confused. You will go through stuff in this life and it will challenge you to the hill, but it does not mean that your life has to be crisis after crisis after crisis. A crisis will come. More crisis will come. But it ought not be a bounce from crisis to crisis like you're told on a lily pad. Our lives in Christ won't be without trials, without troubles, without challenges, without bumps in the road. In fact, as we have talked about it all, you hear me talking about it a lot, the road for the Christian, it's not a paved road, it is a bumpy road. It's more like an off-road experience. And here we are shocked when we hit a bump. Shocked when we get into a, a little bit. When we have the, uh, the, the means and the ability to climb on out of it. When you get in your hole, don't stay in your hole. Don't tuck down in your hole. We're living beneath our means. What would your life look like if we were living according to the guidelines and the path we laid down by Jesus Christ? Let's face it. When it comes to reading our Bibles today, most of us don't get an A. Amen. But can I get an amen? (laughs) When it comes to our prayer life, talking and listening to God, some of us don't get an A. When it comes to diligently studying the word of God, some of us will readily admit that we are failing. But in this new day, we should have the opportunity and the desire to drink deeply of his word. There is no excuse. We've got all of the objects available to us. Now, y'all remember what it was like when you didn't know something? You used to have to go to that book of encyclopedias and then you had to find the right letter and to pull it off the shelf and then find the right page. Y'all got it good. All y'all do is pick up the phone and say, Google. <laughs> Tell me what is the circumference of the earth. <laughs> we had to do math to figure that out. <laughs> we had it at our hands. And yet sometimes we act as if we're lost. Christians follow their Lord by imitating his life and obeying his commands. To take up the cross meant to carry your own cross to the place where you would be killed. Lord, have mercy. Many Galileans had been killed on the way to Rome, that way in Rome. Applied to the disciples, it meant to identify completely with Christ's message, even if it meant death. Yeah. 
For the disciple, that would be you and I, it means that we should identify completely with Christ's message, even if it means death. That's where we give up our Christian matters. <laughs> the wonderful thing about it is that God is so good, even though that is the, the lesson he's teaching in this text. But then he goes further, and Paul writes in Romans, convince us to give you, I beseech you therefore, my brothers, that you would commit, present yourself as living sacrifices. Ha, how about that? Christ doesn't even ask us to die. He asks us to live. Not die for him, live for him because he did what? Die for us. Deny, we must deny our own selfish desires to use our time and our money our own way and to choose out our own direction for life. Following Christ is costly now, but it is worth it in the long run. It is worth the pain and the effort. It's kind of like, mm, it's kind of like going to college. It's kind of like saving money. It's kind of like not having everything right now. Sometimes it seems like you're giving up a lot to put something away, but when you need it later, it's available to you. Awesome. Real old. People are willing to pay a high price for something they value. Is, is it any surprise that Jesus would demand this much commitment from us, his followers? There is at least three conditions that must be met when people want to follow Jesus. We must be willing to deny ourselves. We must be willing to take up our crosses. We must be willing to follow him. Anything less is superficial lip service. It's superficial lip service. Stop being fake and just saying stuff. If you're not willing to deny yourself, if you're not willing to take up your cross daily, if you're not willing to follow Christ, then you're not willing to be his disciple. And if you're not willing to be his disciple, well, how do you expect for him to give you all the things that he already wants to give you right now? I'm trying to stay focused, y'all. It's hard. <laughs> So let me roll through this right quick. Deny yourself. Then he said to them all, anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Discipleship demands following Jesus on this way of suffering. To deny self means willingly to renounce any so-called right to plan or choose and to recognize his lordship in every area of your life. Stop thinking you're going to control your life and that your life is going to be exactly what you want it to be. And let me tell you why this is important for us as Christians, because I know you probably wonder why would I tell you not to have dreams. I'm not saying don't have dreams, dream, dreams, or live a dream. What I'm saying is this. We are human beings, which means that our ability to see life is limited. If we focus only on what we see and what we want, we will cheat ourselves, hallelujah, because God is able to do so much more. Man, I, uh, you don't understand. I got in a car last Sunday and went to Detroit and put, picked up my niece and nephew and I drove them down to Tuskegee and on the way down, I'm saying to them, now what's it, what, how is that, oh, we good. All we got to do is get there. We get down to Tuskegee. They ain't registered. They don't have no financial aid. They don't have no housing. They, it's, 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 I'm telling you. I, I want to tell you. I'm telling you the truth. Man, I got down to that campus and I was like, I was just in shock. I was like, oh my gosh. What have you all been doing? I know this is going on YouTube, oh well. But anyway, so I get down to the campus and, and it's just it's just unbelievable. And and, 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 and I'm trying to help. I'm, I'm trying to go here and tie this knot and put that together. You know what I'm saying. And Bert, uh, Bert, I know you know what I'm saying. So you're trying to make this work, right? But for those of you all who don't know, Tuskegee ain't cheap. <laughs> On Wednesday afternoon, we were walking across the campus towards the automobile with a understanding 
believe that we were headed back up 75 to Detroit. The gap was too wide. What they needed to matriculate was too far off. And what I had in my pocket was too small. <laughs> Carrying his cross through the heart of the 
city was supposed to be a tacit admission that the Roman Empire was correct in their sentencing to their, of death upon them. An admission that Rome was right and they were wrong. So when Jesus enjoined his followers to carry their crosses and follow him, he was referring to a public display before others that Jesus is right and we are wrong. I know it's hard for you to understand because most of us get up every day with the desire to do the right thing, to go in the right way. We plan to be right, but don't you know that our right sometimes is still wrong because God's right is so right? I don't know if that makes sense to you, but but basically what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when we think we're doing the right thing, the problem we get is that we do what's good, but we don't always do what's best. God always shows us what's best, even in the midst of our our desire, I want to give up, to let go. Take up your cross, and then thirdly, follow Jesus. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him follow me. To follow him means deliberately choose to lay hold to the life that is indeed a part of what Christ wants you to have. It means finding at last the reason for our existence and it means an eternal reward. We instinctively recoil from a life of following. We don't like to follow. Amen. We don't like to be told what to do. We don't like people telling us that we need to go this way when we go we want to go that way. That's why y'all don't listen to your poor GPS. That's why the GA, the famous, the, the favorite word in your GPS is recalculating. Because you can't seem to follow what the GPS is trying to tell you. Yet you ask the GPS to take you where you want to go. Somebody say amen. Our minds are reluctant to believe that his that, 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 that God's will for us could be better than what we do for ourselves. Yet the words of Christ, if anyone desires to come after me, means that nobody is excused and nobody is expected to do it. We are all called and given an opportunity to do it. The natural tendency is to save our lives by selfish, complacent, routine, petty existence. We may indulge our pleasures and our appetites by basking in comfort, luxury, and ease, by living for the present by trading our finest talent, talents to the world in exchange for a few fake years of security. But in the very act, we lose our lives. That is, we miss the true purpose that God has for our lives, a profound spiritual pleasure that goes with it. On the other hand, we may lose our lives for the Savior's sake, then we gain so much more. Please understand this. I'm talking to y'all young people specifically. Please understand it. If you give God your life now, if you follow what God has for you now, it's going to make a very big difference as you go on your way. See, some of us are frustrated. We're aggravated because we waited too long to start following Christ and so we got all kinds of battle scars and all kinds of wounds that God didn't intend for us to have but that's okay, we got them and they remind us of what we went through they remind us of when we went astray they remind us of when we chose to do what we wanted to do instead of doing what God wanted us to do and all I'm saying to you all as you're young is start now following God listening to God, denying yourself taking up your Christ, reading your word so that you'll be on point to where God wants you to be. I want you to know that when you're on point, doing what God wants you to do, it sometimes seems a little raggedy, but guess what? It always shows itself to be fine and it, it always shows itself to be the best thing you can ever experience. It always shows itself to be good because God is good all the time. We spend too much time wasting time. <laughs> Too much time being beholden to somebody we shouldn't be beholden to. Yeah. Bowing down to Mr. G.E. Bowing down to Mr. Sherman Williams. Bowing down to Mr. IBM. To Ms. Hewlett Packard. Bowing down to all of these jobs which we owe ourselves to. And yet at the end of the day, they will diss you in a minute. <laughs> Layoffs, pink slips. They start rallying around the coffee pot talking about you. Next thing you know, you're not worthy of what you spent 25 years giving. But God, oh Lord, 
God always shows himself to be honorable, always shows himself to be of integrity, always shows himself to be of strength. Even when we have no strength, we get to lean on God. Now let me ask you this. When you get weak, let me see what you're going to do. Try leaning on GE. <laughs> Try leaning on that employer. That employer will slip away and watch you fall, but God will always hold you up. He always shows himself to be strong. He always shows himself. So go forward. And say, I surrender all. What do I surrender all? I surrender all. Surrender your all, not to just anything and anybody, but still surrender your all to Christ. It is so easy for us to surrender to other stuff and other people, but it's so hard for us to surrender to God. We will surrender to our families, to our mates, to our friends, to our cars, to our homes, to our jobs. But when it comes to surrendering to God, we fight. Stop fighting. Let go and let God have his way. I surrender all. I surrender all to him. Not just some of who I am, some of what I am. I surrender all. Can you do that today? Can you deny yourself? Can you take up your cross daily? Can you follow Jesus? What life you will have if you do that? Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow Jesus. Even if your friends don't agree, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow Jesus. When the world talks about you, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Even when you have to do it all by yourself, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Depend completely, totally on God's sufficiency and understand that God's sufficiency is enough. Trust God with everything you have. Surrender yourself fully to God. Surrender to God. Even if it's unpopular, pouring out into the lives of others. Lose your life in Christ. Become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Sold out, not a sellout. Committed, not careless. Devoted, not lost. Faithful, not faithless. Deny yourself. Take up your cross daily. Follow Jesus. God is trying to do a great thing in your life. Give God your best. He's given so much to you. He's giving you life. He's giving you eternity. He's giving you favor. He only asks that you give your life as a living sacrifice to him, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship. Don't hold back. Don't hold on. Don't hold out. Let go and let God. Deny yourself of the microwave blessings that we have become so used to. Pick up your cross daily and follow Jesus wherever he leads us, wherever he wants us to go. Do you want God to lead you today? Do you want God to know that you need him today? Don't wait until tomorrow or the next day. Don't wait to get your nails done first. Don't wait to watch the baseball game. Don't wait to lay down some track. Surrender to God now. Surrender to God today. Surrender to God with all you have so that God can begin his work of blessing you and giving back to you so much more than you can ever do for yourself. That's why I like to tithe. I like to tithe because I tithe out of obedience. I cannot be God giving. I don't care how hard I try. If I gave my whole paycheck, it still would not mean anything because God will still take care of me. God is still my provider. God is still the one who allows me to do far more than 90% than I can ever do with 100% by myself because I don't know what God knows. I don't see what God sees. I have not experienced what God is trying to get me to experience. But when I let go and I let God and I surrender and I give myself to him, God can get all up in me. God can show me things I've never seen. God can bless others through me. God can make something this sanctuary still bound up and tied up in your own desire to do your own will. That this will mean something to you. That every time you read Luke 9, 23, it will put fire in your body that you'll get busy doing what God wants you to do. Everything that you're struggling with right now, please, everything that you're struggling with right now, 
There's a breakthrough for you if you let go and let God lead you. Right? You're trying to go in the right direction. You're trying to do the right thing. But it seems like you're being blocked. Right? God says, I have a way around. I have a way over. I have a way under. I have a way through. But if we're not counting and depending and relying on God to show us how to get through, we're still standing at a door. Wednesday we were walking off campus. We were actually going to the car. And I said to them, I said, wait, before we go to the car, let me go see one more person. I went into my old counselor and I said to her, I'm about to take them home. Before I do that, is there anything you think I should do? She says, go talk to the director of admissions. I went down to talk to the director of admissions. They put us in the DMV or MV, whatever. Right. You know the way you get the little number and it goes on the screen. Mm-hmm. When we get to the window, it's her financial aid. There's their financial aid counselor who's already given us what he's going to give you. So he said, what you want not? <laughs> I said, well, can I speak to the financial aid director? Oh, that's it. You want to do that? Like, unless you have another suggestion. The door was closed. And we had walked away. But by God's grace, he opened up one, two, three, four, I think five other doors where there was resources that just came in. Now remember, we were going home on Wednesday. He's in class at 9 o'clock Friday morning. All I'm saying is that I couldn't see it. Because remember, that when you go into these offices, you're here, and there's a desk, and there's a door, and there's a window, and there's stuff going on back there that you kind of want to get in and see because you're like, if I could just get back there, there might be something back there. God says, you don't have to go in that door here. Go around here. I went around to the back went inside to talk to the director. I bumped into the fire. I bumped into his admissions counselor standing outside. Coming, We were all leaving for the day and we just happened to see each other. Went back to that same man the next day because he hadn't gotten any admissions money. Like, what's going on? Went back to that same man the next day. Oh, but lady came in, $5,000. I was like, whoa. All I'm trying to say, you don't have to give up on your life. Because God has a better life. Even if it doesn't look like the one that you've been trying to build. If you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you do so today. If you never give me your life to Jesus, I pray that you will surrender yourself today. If you don't have a church home, we invite you today. People come out are part of our family. And if you've never been baptized, I fully immerse you as Jesus is baptized. We invite you today. The doors of the church are open. If you've never accepted Jesus, let us stand. We're going to stand and make it easier for you to get out. If you've never accepted Jesus, we invite you to do so today.